Hi, this is Stella from XJW Philippines and I'm here at my favorite place in Macau. This is um, an open park and I love the feeling of getting out. I was <laughs> stuck inside the flat for two weeks and I'm just glad that <laughs> I went out today and now making this video. I'm just going to hear to tell a bit of my story and how I woke up. So maybe I'll start with, a, I think that was the end of July before the regional convention in Hong Kong. So I stumbled upon a video in YouTube, which was the Australian Royal Commission. And um, I didn't know it was the Australian Royal Commission. I had no idea what the Australian Royal Commission was. All I saw was the face of Jeffrey Jackson in the thumbnail. So I said, I know this guy. So I click and watch. And I was shocked. <laughs> I, I said, why was he standing in a court giving testimony? So I played along like a little game while he was being asked. I tried to answer and see if I would get the same answer as he was giving. Some, we have the same answers. <laughs> when he was asked if um, they were God's sole channel of communication here on earth. I said yes, well, of course, that was what I was believing, led to believe for 42 years that they were God's sole channel of communication here on earth, being the people in the secret slave. But then he said, it's presumptuous to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like a switch that was flicked inside my head. And at that moment, I woke up. It's like this a bucket of ice cold water being poured on top of my head and uh, I just woke up in that moment <laughs> that was so dizzying experience actually because I, I feel like I was spinning in that moment like my head is realizing something I couldn't comprehend because all my life, I believe that the witnesses have the truth. And hearing that from one of the governing bodies saying that it's presumptuous, click something in my head and suddenly I'm all up, wake up. I... <laughs> that was the week before the regional convention in Hong Kong. So imagine uh, the feeling I have while I was sitting inside the convention I I was like catatonic my friend was uh, she was worried I can see it written all over her face she was worried about me because I was not jotting notes I was not taking down notes I was not even opening my Bible I was just stare, staring in front and he can see that uh, my, my face is not um, agreeing with what I was hearing, what was being said. And yeah, I was just sitting down there for three, three days, not saying anything. And then the next week, I... I got some more information about the witnesses, the history, the cover-ups. So I started asking her, my, my closest friend, just giving her some, some things, some insights of what's going inside my, my head. But I'm, I didn't tell her everything yet. I'm just starting, you know, um, just asking questions and uh, so, so she told me, yeah, she, she was worried. When I was uh, when we were at the convention, and I was not opening my Bible, not writing anything, I was just sitting down. 
and then I skip the meeting next the next week after that started skipping going to field service and so I had a chat with my dad during those awakening moments of my life and uh, he I don't know where to go to I, I was so confused because when you start waking up and you find so many things that are so outrageous and you want to rationalize things but you can't because there's so much evidence so yeah I tried speaking up to my dad and telling him everything and he said he urged me to go have a talk with one of the elders here in Macau. So I said, okay, I, I, I will try and talk to, to one of the elders. But my friend who was worried about me having these questions and doubts inside me, she went ahead to the elders and, and gave a, a written letter that I gave to her that contains all of my doubts she she gave it to the elder and she didn't even read what's in that which was <laughs> disappointing she didn't hear what's inside really she didn't read what's inside and she just gave it to the elder because she said she was worried but all i can think of is she wanted to clean her hands, wash her hands and have nothing have nothing to do with me. So I had a chat with the with the elder here and that was I think October twenty eighteen. He was from Australia. <laughs> Funny. He said that his family knows Jeffrey Jackson they came from the same place in Australia and he said that um, Jeffrey Jackson went to the commission on his own accord which was a lie because I found out that Jeffrey Jackson was summoned to the commission <laughs> would not go there <laughs> on his own <laughs> my goodness so so I, I, I asked the elder here, he said, why are you allowing Peter Weiss back into the congregation? And uh, why are there so much cover-ups? And why is the organization not doing anything about it? Or why, is, why are they not um, adjusting the policy for child sex abuse? What about the two witness rule? Things like that. And <laughs> So th that's what I was asking him. He didn't answer any of my questions. Instead, he said, I, if I was really concerned about the safety of the children, then I should go back home and take care of my own kids. And I was surprised because I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that he would shift the blame on me instead of addressing the issues that I brought up. So. That was disappointing. I said, I realize I'm not gonna get anything from this conversation with him. So he even called me, he even said that I sounded like an apostate. I was just expressing myself. I was just um, spilling all the questions inside my head. He said, uh, yeah, I have no rights to question the organization about the safety of children because I myself was not doing that. That was really depressing. <laughs> Made me feel bad about my own children, not me being there for my own children. He said uh, I should go attend the meeting after the, the conversation, which I declined because Honestly, I was pissed off about what happened because he didn't give, he didn't give me a clear answer of, what the, of the questions that I, I questioned him. Instead, he 
he shifted the blame on me. So why would I attend the meeting? It was not up to it. And he said maybe the next week he will bring another elder and they will have a chat with me and uh, probably clear up my head. But something came up to my head. It, it rang something and I said, I, I don't feel good about it. Maybe my gut feeling saying that he is bringing another witness so he could uh, have an allegation about me being an apostate. So I skipped the meetings again and again. And then the next month, because they, they keep um, calling me, ringing me, sending me messages about my field service report. Even the circuit overseer ringing me and sending me messages, wanting to meet up with me. But my mind, at, I think at that time, my mind was really made up. So I sent a letter uh, dated, dating November 20, 2018. I sent my letter of disassociation and they read it on Friday meeting and what's the sad thing about it is that everybody thought that I was this fellowship or something else uh, nobody really knows what happened because uh, the elders uh, stopped my friends from talking about the questions I brought up so in some ways they hush it up so nobody really understood why I disassociated or they, they think most probably I got this fellowship for immoral activities. So yeah, uh, that, that was the lonely, those were the lonely days of my life after I disassociating. I have lost every one of my friends in the congregation. I miss the community, I miss the association. And at the beginning of 2019, I have nobody, really. I have no physical friends. I can't even find one single XJW from the Philippines. There's no group for Filipino XJW. So I decided I will form a group, even though it's all by myself. I said, if nobody is out there, then I um, will make one. So if anybody would search for a community for XJWs in the Philippines, they, they would find one. So I decided to, to form a group, invited my kids. They were also supported by me. They were so happy that I woke up. Even though they were raised up as witnesses, but they woke up ahead of me and uh, they were so glad that I was no longer a witness. And uh, then I had a talk with my sister. I explained to her why I disassociated. Even though she's not fully convinced, she supported me along with one of her daughters. And then I reached out to uh, the nephew and the niece of my husband. I'm separated, by the way. So it's a good feeling that they supported me as well. Uh, so at the beginning, we had eight members for the group. And for so many months, I there's nobody joining in. No, no. It's like... Yeah, very lonely. But I didn't let up. I, I didn't give up. I still earnestly went into so many sites, YouTube, Facebook, even Reddit, trying to find um, Filipino XJWs. And um, one by one, I get to meet them and ask them if they could join me and others in the group. And, I feel so happy that there are um, Filipino witnesses who are waking up and joining, joining our group and um, giving their voices and expressing what they're going through and them finding support 
with each other. And I feel that waking up and coming forward as an XJW is all worthwhile. Seeing that there's people out there who are waking up and giving me hope that someday um, my parents will wake up too. But as for now, it, I really am so glad, even though I have no physical friends here, I have friends everywhere in the world. There are so many activists and XJWs that are very supportive and very loving. and. Uh, it really is encouraging to just connect and um, uh, express myself and find out that I'm not going out of my mind. And I, what I'm going through is normal waking up moments. And uh, that also, in some ways, I'm providing support to other uh, um, ex witnesses. And yeah gives me purpose and feels good to have a new community of XJWs and not being by myself anymore. And I'm just overwhelmed that people are waking up and hope it will continue and many more uh, from the Philippines will wake up and find the truth about the truth. Anyways, um, this video is taking long and um, I just hope that in some ways um, my story will help somebody out there and will reach out to us here um, from the SJW Philippines community. Please join our group and uh, we'll be here for you. If you need support, somebody to listen to, somebody to talk to, we are here for you. and. Um, any questions, any doubts that you have, um, we can help you to clarify them and help you find sources and um, or just merely just have someone to talk to. We'll be here for you. And um, just keep, um, keep the hopes up. There is life after JW and we, I can assure you all that there is unconditional love and support and we'll be here. Thank you.